So suppose we're investing $1,000 at 5% compounded monthly for 30 years. So I know that my initial amount is 1,000, my interest rate is 0.05, we're compounding monthly, so 12 compounds in a year, and we're doing this for 30 years. Uh, so the amount after 30 years would be $1,000 times 1 plus 0.05 over 12 to the 12 times 30. Now, when we go to evaluate this on our calculators, we might go ahead and divide 0.05 by 12, and we get this number here. So 0.05 over 12 comes out to be 0 0.0041666666, so on and so forth. And we have to ask our, the question to ourselves, what are we going to do with that? Now, we have two options. Option 1 is to round. Option 2 is to go ahead and use our calculator in a way that lets us avoid rounding. Now, it's okay to round as long as you're careful about how much you round. So a good rule of thumb is to keep three significant figures. Now, a significant figure is a value that doesn't include any little leading zeros. Uh, so in this decimal here, these zeros, we don't really count as significant values. We count these values as significant. So if, if we were going to round this, it would be okay to round it to 0.40417, rounding up because this is bigger than, is 5 or bigger. Uh, what we would not want to round it to, for, for example, 0.004, which is very different. To sort of see why, uh, here's a little table of values. If we rounded that to 0 0.004, it would give our answer as 4208.59, which is $259 off from the correct answer. That's a really big error, and that is a big problem. If we kept one more decimal place, then we'd only have $53 of error. If we keep those three significant digits, now we're down to $5 of error. Now, $5 out of 4,500 is not too big of a deal as long as you're not a banker. Now, if you're a banker, of course, then you don't want to round at all. So the more decimals you keep, the better. But if you're going to round, make sure you keep at least three decimal places. Now, happily, we don't really have to round at all here because what I could do is after dividing, again, 0.05 divided by 12 and getting that ugly decimal, I could go ahead and say, let's go ahead and add 1 to that, and now raise it to the power of, let's see here, 12 times 30 is 360, so I'm sort of pre-multiplying that, and now multiply that by 1,000, and I've come up with a very exact answer, right? This was the answer that we saw here for, for the unrounded value, uh, and uh, a very exact answer, no error at all, uh, by using our calculator in a way that allowed us to avoid having to round values.